you are one of the many people who watch Vectubers like Solbo and Styles and think, hey, I want to do that, but you don't really know where to start. I know that was me two years ago. Well, I got you. Welcome to learning to be a Vectuber. This will be a three video course where I will teach you everything you need to know to become a Vectuber. These videos will teach you the basics and how to become a Rectuber, what it's like and how to deal with growing as a Rectuber, and finally, being a Rectuber. There are plenty of videos on this topic, but I intend to go deeper and explain further into topic. From experience, there are quite a few things that no one tells you. Welcome to the basics of being a Rectuber. For starters, we're gonna assume you know how to record, edit, and upload your videos. If not, I will link tutorials on how to do so in the description. Let's focus on the rec part of Rectuber to start with. Let's start with you, not the videos, you. As a beginning Rectuber, you're going to want to do and have the following. First, create an easy to understand and read name. This one's pretty self-explanatory. People need to be able to recite your name and correctly. You want people to know your name, and if they can't read it or it's confusing, it'd be hard to spread by word, as well as if there's too many numbers substituting letters it can be really hard to read. Number two, create an outfit that people will recognize. When you see pictures of Rectubers, you recognize them. It's as simple as that. For example, bam. I bet you all my 481 tokens that you can name these three people. Both Aya, Soul Fox, and Harry. You recognize these people from their outfit and their avatar. You know their avatar as them, so you know who it is. You want that to be you. Your outfit also needs to be unique. If you look remotely like any other Rectuber or popular person or any other above, people will constantly tell you that. More importantly, once you become an established Rectuber, most people won't use in your outfit because they'll be seen as a clone of you. And ironically, you don't see people dressed like Rectubers as their main outfit, unless they're trying to be a clone or it's done on purpose. Number three, have a good track record. Mm, possibly the most important one. When I say track record, I mean don't get banned, duh. Be kind, and most importantly, don't have beef with anyone. You want to be as clean as you possibly can. Any past issues or beef with someone has the possibility of coming up and that can get you into drama. Even if it's been dealt with a year ago, it can always come back. Power of the internet. Take it from someone who's dealt with drama, don't get involved with it. It's one of the worst things you can possibly do. Not only will it have an impact on future collaborations with Rec Room themselves and future collaborations in general, but also that will be there forever. You can't erase it. You can't erase what you say, none of the above. That's a topic for another video, but don't get into drama. Anyway, have a good track record, be a good boy. Or girl. Or are they them. Be a good person. Let's begin at the start of making a video. The video idea. Your video idea needs to be engaging, easy to understand, and most importantly, able to be made into a video. There are many ideas that sound better on paper than once they're turned into videos. But don't get discouraged. This is very normal. You scrap it and you move on to the next video. As a smaller Rectuber, new viewers like to see something they haven't seen, and the YouTube algorithm will also reward original ideas. Especially now, Original ideas are not easy to think of. Let's be honest here. Record video content creation has been around for five years now. But there is a trick. And you lucky duck, if you made it this far, I'm going to share this trick with you. Drum roll, please. Nah, I'm kidding. The best way to get ideas is to take something from an existing idea and put your own spin on it. Let me explain. Let's use this video of Bose as an example. In this video, Bo took his wife and his uncle into VR and rec room to try to beat Crescendo. Sounds like an original idea? Not exactly. But it is original enough to work. Bringing family and real life friends into rec room is not a new idea. Or you're Barda's mom, Squinkles Barda's sister, you get the idea. The difference and the original part of Bo's video is the beating crescendo part. Bo being a quest pro, okay Dr. Seuss, took his family through the quest. The original parts are the goal of beating crescendo, his family sucking at quests, and the ability to beat the quest in general because of Bo's skill. Bo took the idea of bringing his family into VR and changed it to his brand, quests. Do you get it now? Rewatch that bit if you didn't, but at his core he took an unoriginal idea and put his own spin on to it. Next up, the recording process. By the way, from here, this video focuses more on YouTube-based stuff than Rec Room. So let's take an idea I did, uh, doing dares in VR. Now, you want to do a few things before you start recording. First off, prepare your voice. You're going to want to sound happy, excited, and very upbeat. You're not going to want to sound tired. That can be one of the biggest turnoffs for a viewer. If you don't sound excited about your video, why should the viewer be excited? Second, prepare everything else. For this video, I compiled all of the dares I was given into a document 
and had it open when I recorded. Finally, follow these three steps before you hit that start recording button. Credit to Energetic Ruth for these tips. First, check your audio settings. No matter what, have voices all the way up and music all the way down. Depending on the video, use sounds and ambience however you wish. Voices is to hear the content of the video and people talking. And music is so you can add your own background music instead of the Reckham track, or if the map has a copyrighted track, definitely don't want that one in there. Second, turn off notifications. You don't want your friend inviting you to distract your viewer. You want your viewer to be focused on the video and nothing else, because if not, they could click off. Finally, the most fun part, actually recording the damn thing. Have fun, follow your idea, and do what you think will work. Continuing on to post-production. After you record, your next step is to edit your video. Most people don't like editing, but I disagree. It can feel like a real chore, but this gives you the chance to make your video your own. Anyway, editing. If you want to succeed, editing is one of the most important parts. In bulk honesty, if you don't edit your videos, you won't succeed. Or at the very least, it's gonna be a whole lot harder. As you go along, you will learn your editing style. Some people have slower and more chilled back editing, and not as many intense edits. Like myself, who has more cuts and more slapstick, faster videos. As I said, the more you do it, the more you will learn what works, the faster it will go, the better you will get. There isn't much more I can say about editing, because it heavily differs depending on the video. For your thumbnail, you're going to want to have certain things. Thumbnails tell viewers about your video, and is normally the deciding factor for viewers, and statistically, viewers look at your thumbnail for around 2 seconds before deciding on clicking or not. As well as, YouTube shows you around 20 videos on your homepage where you first open it, so your video has to stand out against those videos for people to click on yours over others. So creating the thumbnail. Here's the secret to getting people to clicking on your videos, and use this tactic when first starting out. Some of y'all are gonna get mad, but here's the truth. <laughs> clickbait. Okay, hear me out. We all hate clickbait. We do. But there is a certain amount of clickbait that is beneficial to your video and your thumbnail. It's a difficult balance to find, but there is a sweet spot between the lies and the truth in a thumbnail. Be very careful when using clickbait, because if the thumbnail has no relation to the video, you will upset your viewers, which is the last thing you want to do, because they clicked on the video to see you get thrown out of a plane, and in reality, you're just playing paintball. Are right, y'all about to go on a ride, ready? Woo! Here's my glorious blue screen to show two thumbnails of mine. We're gonna start with the repeats and re-releases thumbnail. If you've been playing for a bit, this will be easy, but try to identify the clickbait in this thumbnail. Got it? Cool. I'm gonna explain it anyway. The item showcased in this thumbnail is the Raw Data Helmet. This item was a crossover between Rec Room and the game Raw Data back in 2016. You can also see that I have the two dates listed on the thumbnail, 2016 and 2022. Since the item was released in 2016, that year is green, but 2022 is in red. If you didn't know, the item's never gonna get re-released, but this thumbnail creates the illusion that the helmet was re-released and people are upset with it. That is the lie in this thumbnail. The helmet was never re-released. Next, the Class of 2021 shirt design video. This one's a bit more difficult, but try to spot the clickbait. Got it? No? Let me explain. This video was about ranking the yearly shirts, but more importantly, creating our own design. The shirt you are looking at right now is not the design we created in the video. P.S. If you want to see that, check that out in the corner. The picture used in the thumbnail is actually the 2016 shirt. The magic of this thumbnail is that the design looks brand new. I pixeled out the shirt so you couldn't tell it was 2016, and used the hue settings to change the red in the shirt to purple. People click on the video thinking the design is that good, and that's the design for the class of 2021 shirt, class of 20, 2021 shirt, but it's not. Alright, wow, that was a lot of info. Please feel free to rewatch, use the chapters and times in the description to skip around. And finally, I will leave a link to this video's script in the description for a textualized version of what I said in this video. I really hope this helps anyone who wants to be a Rectuber and needs some help. If this helps at all, or if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe down below, and congrats, you have just learned the basics of becoming a Rectuber. Tune in soon for growing as a Rectuber. Thank you so much for watching.